Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, we are going to be talking about awesome new comics and graphic novels coming out September 2022. We are so close to the spooky season. I can't believe how fast this year has gone. So we're going to be talking about some really fun ones to get you prepped for the chilly fall, Halloween, Thanksgiving, wintertime, dark nights. So excited. Before we get started today, make sure to come check out our Amazon live channel at amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library. You'll find a lot of awesome Halloween or dark stuff on there. We do live stream often and check out our show notes at darksidedlibrary.com for additional reads. These are affiliate links, but they don't have any bearing on you. We just want to be totally transparent, but they do help out our podcast. So thank you so much for checking that out. Stay tuned for a potential Patreon by the end of this year. We're looking forward to creating a community of dark readers to share our awesome love of horror and gothic finds. All right, back to the podcast. So let's start out with one that's actually for kids too. It's called Coven. It comes out September 6th. It's by Jennifer Dugan and Kit Seaton is the illustrator. So this is for grade level 7 through 9. This is a paranormal queer YA graphic novel from the author of Some Girls Do. And Kit Seaton was the illustrator for Wonder Woman Warbringer. So MZ has always lived in sunny California, and she'd much rather spend her days surfing with her friends or hanging out with her girlfriend than honing her powers as a fire elemental. Super cool. But when members of her family's coven back east are murdered under mysterious circumstances that can only be the result of powerful witchcraft, her family must suddenly return to dreary upstate New York. There, MZ will have to master her neglected craft in order to find the killer before her family becomes their next target. Now, Coven has a really cool art style. It's very vibrant, very fun, very clean, and I really like the characters in here. So it looks really cute. I highly recommend it. It's called Coven. This is by Jennifer Dugan and Kit Seaton. Now, something for adults. The next comic is published by Dark Horse, so it's gonna be good. It's called Daisy. Comes out September 27th. It's by Colin Lorimer. So here's what the publisher has to say. A graphic novel masterpiece of modern horror, Colin Lorimer's Daisy springs from the apocalyptic Book of Enoch, excluded from the Bible canon and disclosing the War of Angels and man's introduction to violence, corruption, and evil. I really like it, and the cover is really stunning. It looks like we have a cleric. She's surrounded by fire, but it almost looks like we've got a height chart in the background. It's interesting what they've done for this cover here. A desperate mother's search for her missing son leads to the mysterious family of Daisy Phillips. Like many teens, Daisy has a hard time fitting in, but for atypical reasons. Daisy stands over eight feet tall. Okay, this is why we have that height measurement. So she stands over eight feet tall and believes herself descended from cannibalistic giants spawned from the outcasts of heaven. Oh, this is good. This frail, disfigured youth may hold the key to unlock the language of creation. That's all in caps. The divine DNA of God and expose the monstrous lie hidden within creation itself. I'm going to have to pick this up. I grew up with Dark Horse Comics. I've always loved everything they've published. And this is no different. Let me check out the images inside the comic book. We've got some eerie illustrations definitely set in the modern times. But we also have some really sinister monsters in here. Some, oh my god, it's really beautifully done. Uh, I don't think I'll get this image out of my head. Yeah, actually, if you look at the pictures on Amazon, you'll see some of these creepy monsters that are inside the comic of Daisy. And it's it's freaky. So check it out. This is uh, oddly because the cover is just so gorgeous. I would not have picked that up and thought, oh yeah, that's going to be a horror comic. No, the inside is creepy. So check out Daisy. This is by Colin Lorimer, and this comes out September 27th. The next comic I want to talk about is also for young adult readers, but adults can enjoy it too. So this is called Demon in the Wood. It comes out September 27th. This is by Leigh Bardugo, and Danny Pendergast is the illustrator. 
beautiful illustrations, kind of a bit of an anime style or even a classic Disney style, maybe a mix of the two. Discover the start of a grand and sinister destiny in Demon in the Wood as a must-have graphic novel prequel to the best-selling series and international Netflix sensation, Shadow and Bone. Okay, so here we go. That's why That's why this is so familiar. All right, so before he led Ravka's second army, before he created the Fold, and long before he became the Darkling, he was just a lonely boy burdened by extraordinary power. Oh, woe is him. Eric and his mother, Lena, have spent their lives on the run, but they will never find a safe haven. They are not only Grisha, they are the deadliest and rarest of their kind, feared by those who wish to destroy them and hunted by those who would exploit their gifts. They must hide their true abilities wherever they go, but sometimes deadly secrets have a way of revealing themselves. So this is being published by Roaring Brook Press. Oddly, we have not covered Shadow and Bone on this podcast because from what I remember, it actually is defined as more of a fantasy rather than really sinister and dark, but this seems really dark. Maybe the prequel is going to have more dark elements, plus I'm not sure what a darkling is. I would imagine it is kind of dark. So check it out. This is Demon in the Wood. This is by Leigh Bardugo and Danny Pendergast. This next comic is bound to be really awesome because it's written by Tanana Reeve Du and Stephen Barnes. The illustrator is Marco Finnegan, so really amazing people. It's called The Keeper. It comes out September 27th. A young black girl finds herself trapped between desperation and her family's dark history in this crazy horror graphic novel. Aisha has suffered a devastating loss. Her parents were killed in a car crash, and now she must move to a decrepit and derelict Detroit to live with her ailing grandmother. However, shortly after moving in, Aisha's grandmother's health rapidly deteriorates, With her dying breath, she summons the dark spirit that has protected their family for generations to watch over Aisha. Oh, good. I love some great warlock packed binding stories. So at first, it seems that this spirit, whom Aisha refers to as the Keeper, is truly doing as her grandmother asked, caring for Aisha and keeping her safe. However, it soon becomes clear that this being can only sustain itself by stealing life from others. Hoo-hoo. I love this. This is a classic story. I'm really excited. So as the Keeper begins to prey on their apartment building's other residents, Aisha and her friends must come together to destroy it or die trying. Tanana Reeve Du is a master of horror and so Stephen Barnes and Marco Finnegan is a fantastic illustrator so keep this one in mind as we approach Halloween this will be a fun one it's called The Keeper by Tanana Reeve Dew, Stephen Barnes, Marco Finnegan and it comes out September 27th. Next up we have it actually is quite cute this is uh it looks like a manga so it's called The Poe Clan this is by Moto Hagio and Rachel Thorne is the translator. It comes out September 20th. So this is a groundbreaking YA vampire series. This is the second volume, so keep that in mind. I will tell you what this one is about, but that means you can go pick up the first one as well and then you get the entire series. An amnesia-stricken Edgar is found alone on a snowy night in England, separated from his Vampirella clan who feed on the energy of the living and while away the centuries in a village of roses he struggles to remember his own name will edgar regain his memory and be reunited with them in stories like piccadilly seven o'clock edith and the last will and testament of oswell owens there are murders mysteries seances and obsessions and generations of humans whose lives are profoundly affected by a boy who does not age Edgar and his embraced companions, his little sister Maribel and Alan Twilight. I love Alan Twilight. That's a great name. A 14 year old from the 1800s. So this is the second and concluding volume of a best-selling manga. It's fantasy, gothic, horror. This was originally published in a magazine from in 1972. 
and then it's been progressively revamped up. So it actually was originally published in March of 1972, so it's very old, to today. Expect some of that really classic manga styling for the drawings and really interesting storyline. Check it out. It's called The Poe Clan. This is by Motohagio and Rachel Thorne is the translator. Next up, we have the second of the Red Room comic series. It's called Red Room Trigger Warning. So I'm not going to read to you what the publisher actually has to say about this one, but the first comic is called Red Room, the Antisocial Network, and the cover is grim. I mean, it's all red and black. We have, I think, some guts spilling out of this guy who's being torn apart. You can see his ribs. He's screaming. Uh, it's clearly very gross. So here's what the Red Room series is kind of about. It's a cyberpunk outlaw splatterpunk masterpiece. Aided by the anonymous dark web and nearly untraceable cryptocurrency, a criminal subculture has emerged. It live streams murders as entertainment. Who are the killers? Who are the victims? Who is paying to watch how to stop it? Red Room is constructed as a series of interconnected stories shining a light on the character who exists in the ugliest corners in cyberspace. I actually like this whole concept because I, I don't really see this being really that far-fetched. I know that sounds gross and terrible, but... You know, we never know what the future is going to look like, especially with live streaming becoming so... Ugh. Anyway, Pisker, luckily, it's not entirely grim. It also has, like, a really dark sense of hu humor. The cartooning is beautiful, and the storytelling is really great. So if you want to get both of them, I, it, it will definitely fill your creepy Halloween season with lots of sinister freaky stories. Check out the Red Room comic series. It's really grim, uh, and I might actually pick this one up and see if I can stream it on our YouTube channel so you guys can actually see what it looks like because it's pretty cool, but you can check it out too on Amazon. Next up, we have a comic that's got a stunning cover. It's called Nyx, Daddy's Girl. It comes out September 20th. It's by Christos Gage, and Mark Borstel is the artist. From the pages of Vampirella and Sacred Six comes Nyx, daughter of a human and the mad god Chaos himself. Nyx's mortal side has been growing stronger, troubling her with all too human emotions. Fortunately for her, there's still the side of her that transforms into a demon of living flame. That's interesting since Nyx is the goddess of the night. It's strange that she actually ends up becoming this goddess of flame. Anyway, so it requires her to feed on the life force of living beings to survive. Oh man, that's awesome. Can a half-demon find her place in our world? Happiness? Even love? Probably not, as she's about to get dragged into, into her dad's workplace problem. So this is called Nyx, Daddy's Girl. This is published by Dynamite Comics. It should be good, and the reading age is actually 13 years and up, so it's great YA read. Speaking of YA reads, we have a mid-grade level comic book called Wait Till Helen Comes. It comes out September 20th. This is for reading ages 8 through 12. This is by Mary Downing Hahn and Meredith, and Meredith Laxton. This is what the publisher has to say about this one. When their mom remarries, Molly and her brother, Michael, try to make friends with their new stepsister, Heather. But Heather only wants to make trouble for them. She lies and tattles and misbehaves. And somehow, they always get the blame. They know she's trying to drive a wedge between her father and their mother so she can have her father all to herself. And it seems to be working. I had a sibling like this. It was not fun. Then... Heather starts playing in the graveyard behind their new house. She claims she can talk to a ghost named Helen. Oh, that's going to get confusing, Heather and Helen. And her behavior gets even stranger. Michael doesn't believe in ghosts and thinks their new little sister is just looking for more attention. But Molly isn't so certain, especially when Heather threatens that Helen is going to come for them and make them sorry. It seems as though things can't get any worse, but... They actually do when Helen comes. The cover is really, really creepy looking. This is actually looks like a really fun graphic novel to give to your mid-level readers 
pre-Halloween because it'll get them prepared for the spooky season. It's being published September 20th, so check it out. It's by Clarion Books. It's Wait Till Helen Comes. Now back to more adult comic books. We have Cover of Darkness. It comes out September 20th. This is by George Michael, which is kind of hilarious if you know who George Michael is. Uh, Not that George Michael, but a different one. We have Chris Cam and we have M.G. Hiblin as the illustrator. This is a dark fantasy series featuring reimagined classic horror characters in an all new shared universe. It's set in medieval Romania. It looks really beautifully done. The I see a werewolf definitely on the cover. I think I see a zombie and a mummy. All very spooky. When a family is separated from each other, they encounter villains and creatures they never knew existed. It's an epic journey where gorillas fight werewolves and a steampunk Atlantean Frankenstein topples cities. This might be hilarious to uh, check out. It's called Cover of Darkness by George Michael, Chris Cam, and M.G. Hiblin. Next, we have Fatal Photos. It's got a really classic looking cover. It, I mean, seriously, it reminds me of the 80s. We have zombies, their face looking all melty, but it's done in that really fun cartoon style. So this is by Jason Kimball. Comes out September 5th. After a dust storm brings on the zombie apocalypse, a once famous photojournalist goes about documenting the end of days, all while fighting the dark reality of humanity in the face of an undead catastrophe. Again, it's got that classic 80s horror vibe going on. It's really fun. It looks really spooky. If you are somebody that loves zombie stuff, this will be a fun one. It's called Fatal Photos by Jason Kimball. The last comic that I have on this list is called Sword of Hyperborea, and this is by the one and only Mike Mignola. We also have Rob Williams, Lawrence Campbell, and Quentin Winter all contributing to this comic, and it looks really, really cool. So this comes out September 13th. This is still in the world of Hellboy, but we have a different character that we're following, or maybe it's the sword. So... From the ancient warrior Gall Denner to Sir Edward Grey to the BPRD's Agent Howards, the iconic Hyperborean sword from the world of Hellboy has landed in many influential hands. This has been no accident. Trace the sword's path through the adventures and encounters that finally brought it to Ragna Rock at the end of the world and witness the sword's journey through history. This is a collection of the Sword of Hyperborea, number one through four. It's 128 pages, published by Dark Horse Comics, of course. Check it out. If you love Mike Mignola, this is obviously one that you want to have on your shelf because it's Mike Mignola and the art is stunning and the story is beautiful and fun and dark and futuristic, but also feels very ancient at the same time. So check it out. This is Sword of Hyperborea by Mike Mignola, Rob Williams, Lawrence Campbell, and Quentin Winter. And that finishes up my very long list of graphic novels and comic books that are coming out this month, September 2022. If you are looking for other reads, check out our other podcast episodes. If you can find more stuff on our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com. Like I said earlier, these are affiliate links, but they have no bearing on you. It just helps the podcast. I personally use this as a collection of books that I'm going to want to read throughout the year. I always go back to this. It's just a really easy way to curate books in general. We'd love for you to join us on our Amazon Live channel at amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library and our socials at dark side of the library on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. We do post a lot of stuff in a lot of places, so definitely come join us. Leave us a comment and make sure to leave a rating and review on your way out. It really helps us understand how well we're doing. Stay tuned for a potential Patreon, at least by the end of the year. We're really hoping we can get that hammered down. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Make sure to share this with your friends and to spread the good word. Stay tuned for next Wednesday. Have a creeptastic week.